the sooner you can match what's in your head with what's going on in the real world, the better you're going to feel. Sorel D, how to read a chest x-ray. All right, how does a radiologist really read and interpret a chest x-ray? So we've all probably done this search on YouTube. There's a lot of decent content out there. In my opinion, I really don't think any of the stuff out there really has anything to do with how a radiologist really interprets a chest x-ray. Right, these videos are extremely detailed. You would think that if, uh, by watching this video, that a radiologist spends 20 to 30 minutes looking at a single chest x-ray. How much time do you think we really spend looking at a chest x-ray? Ready for the answer? About 60 seconds. All right, here's my proof. This is a history report from a chest x-ray performed long, long ago. All right, just go through this with me. So a chest x-ray was performed. It was marked as quality control at 8.26.57 p.m. A resident opened up the study to look at it at 8.31.23. At 8.32.58, a resident closes the study, puts in a report, and uh, puts it for attending review. A couple hours later, an attending opens it up at 10.23.30. And at 10.24.22, an attending marks it as dictated, meaning they look at the image, look at the report, uh, finalize the report, and then publish that report for any clinician or anybody to view. So how does a radiologist really dictate a chest x-ray? These are the things that I think about and care about when I'm looking at chest x-rays. The absolute first thing I'm thinking about is what is the clinical context of the chest x-ray? Where is this patient coming from? Is this an ER patient? Is this a trauma patient? Is this an ICU patient? Is this a surgery ICU patient who's just had cardiac surgery? Is this a normal outpatient who's coming in because the primary care doctor wants to rule out something suspicious? All right. Knowing about this history is so critical, it's not even funny, and these are things that uh, can help you before you even look at the chest x-ray. This is probably actually 50% of the interpretation is just knowing where is the patient coming from and what are the important things to look for based on where the patient's coming from. All right. Now, now that I pull up the chest x-ray, the first thing I do is some accounting. I look for the high density objects such as lines and tubes. This also includes things like sternotomy wires, prosthetic heart valves, and things of that nature. And importantly, I'm looking for malposition. I'm looking for an ET tube that's pushed too far, a central line that's not properly positioned. I'm looking for a nasogastric tube that's going into the lung, all right, that sort of thing. The next thing I think about in a chest x-ray is, can I make a diagnosis? I'm really looking for essentially four things. I'm looking for pneumonia. I'm looking for pleural effusions. I'm looking for vascular congestion. And last but not least, I'm looking for pneumothorax, my personal cannot miss diagnosis. All right, the third thing I do is I look for things that I personally have commonly missed. What are these things? I look for things like rib fractures in the setting of trauma, because I've missed this a ton of times. I look for things like clavicle fractures, which are very easy to overlook if you don't look directly at the clavicle. I look at the proximal humerus for fractures especially in patients that are old and frail. And then I survey the bones, just looking for any sort of strange bone lesion, a sclerotic lesion, a lucent lesion that could suggest some type of uh, metastatic cancer. And I try to make that diagnosis. The last thing I think about before I sign off on a chest x-ray is I don't want to be sued. And based on my web research, the most common reason a radiologist is sued in the United States is for missing a lung cancer on a chest x-ray. That's number one. So what I always do is I look for any type of parenchymal opacity that could be interpreted as a lung nodule or lung cancer. If I see something like that, I make a recommendation for CT and I move on. And believe me, sometimes I wish I didn't have to do this, but this is what it is to practice medicine in the United States of America. So again, these are the things I think about when I'm pulling up a chest x-ray. I'm basically going through this checklist in my mind. And that is exactly how I look at a chest x-ray. So next, I'm going to show you how do I actually interpret a chest x-ray in real time. All right. You guys are watching Stroke RMD. Thanks.